We start our day on the water with Terry's brother, Todd. We're fly fishing for Atlantic salmon at Big Falls on the Humber River in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. Fishing in Newfoundland has been a way of life for many generations. It's an incredible way to pass down traditions, spend time with family, and create lasting memories. As a child, I can remember that my most favorite time of summer holidays was always our annual trip to Big Fall salmon fishing. My brother and I, grew up there, uh, spending two or three weeks there every summer, uh, starting at a very young age, and we still go back today and fish the same waters and enjoy the same camaraderie that we've shared, even as kids, running up and down the beach and chasing each other and laughing and kidding. And now it's more about the fish and the experience and meeting old friends and sharing water together, but it's indelibly marked to a young kid being first introduced to the sport by my dad and seeing the, the water of Big Falls and how many fish it had and how great it was to be there. Things may look a little different now. They aren't jumping around from rock to rock anymore. There are aging bodies and aching joints. But the river doesn't judge. And every year, it welcomes them back, no matter what they have been through. Back at all those years, I, I can still remember quite vividly actually my brother and the first fish he ever caught. Uh, we were in a pool called the Pulpit. Uh, my dad had us out there in a, in a rowboat that you rent at Big Falls. And he had on a fly on his rod. It was a thunder and lightning wet fly, and he hooked this fish. And he hooked it by himself. Give, I give him credit there. And, you know, Dad didn't hook it and pass the rod to him. And he played the fish in. And I remember we landed the fish, and that was it. As soon as we landed the fish, Todd wanted to go ashore. It was there was no more fishing. He was taking that fish and going to the camp. So we just had to row in and drop him off on the beach. And it was so funny seeing him dragging this fish up the beach with the tail dragging in the sand. But he was so proud of that fish. It was, it was a pretty cool.
you know, back then it was about the fish and keeping fish. And now, obviously, with low numbers and catch and release, and Castine and I, we don't keep any fish anymore. And I can remember, and still to this day, you know, quite honestly, Newfoundlanders struggle with catch and release. It's catching on more and more, which is good to see. Uh, I've been releasing fish since. Before I was 10, uh, we have a cabin and there's a big population of landlocked salmon there and some really nice ones from 3 to 10 pounds. And my dad had us releasing those right from day one. We, we didn't keep any because he said we didn't need them and we let them go. So when the regulations came in for catch and release, it wasn't a big thing for us. We were so used to letting fish go that it was just second nature. So. We've really adjusted quite easily to that regulation. Todd and Terry still fish here every year, finding their places on the well-worn rocks in their favorite pools. They bring others here to share, family, friends, sports we're guiding. It's an incredible place if you're looking for big numbers of fish. At times, there can be a lot of people here, but from what I've seen, the busier it is, the more fun they have. Sharing a laugh, standing shoulder to shoulder with people they grew up with. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and this is their village. So we grew up at Buckins. My dad worked uh, in the, with the company and eventually went underground working in the mines. The mines closed down in the 80, early 80s, and luckily enough, uh, he went to work then with the No Paul Salmon Hatchery, which was a new initiative brought in to try to stock the exploits uh, with the Atlantic salmon because the numbers had fallen to, there was basically no fish going up the exploits at that time. That was back in the early 80s, late 70s. And the program was, the hatchery was located on No Paul, a brook that runs into the Exploits River, and they took the brood stock from, from the Humber, which is ironic in a way, it's my favorite river and our favorite river, and they'd bring them to truck them to No Paul, they'd keep them there until they were ready to spawn, spawn them out, release them, keep the eggs over winter, and release the fry all through the waterways and headwaters of the Exploits River system the following spring. And it was probably during that time that uh, I think he got, we really uh, started to see how much Dad cared about salmon. Because watching them, it was like they were his babies. And he'd always, like he kept, he looked out to them all winter and made sure that they didn't freeze over. And he was one of the most important fellows up there in terms of doing all the stuff to look after him. And, you know, he's so very proud of his participation in that program and what it did to the exploits today. It's just an incredible success story. And honestly, in my opinion, it's probably something we're going to have to visit for other rivers in the very near future or salmon are really in trouble. Terry and Todd's dad Michael still makes the trip out with them every year. At 86 years of age, he spends more time telling stories than he does fishing, usually making just one trip to the river a day. I never fished at all, never put a line this year. Never ever Trout fish, didn't I? No? No. Age, age is catching up, eh? <laughs> Last time we went trout fishing, I stuck with fly in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, it was yeah. more and more. As long as I can remember, my dad was predominantly a dry fly fisherman, and he always tells a great story of his first introduction to the dry fly. The first time I saw a white wolf, and I'm out, out fishing, you're allowed to keep six a day, didn't you? And I had a couple of fish, I'm sure. 
And I might just probably come out just there for me, we'll see. Cast, and I'm casting a wet fly out like that. This fellow is casting, and I'm seeing this big thing go through the air as he's cast. I'm saying, what? Is it yelling, I wonder. My boy pitched underwater just out for me, you know. And I'm looking at it, and I said, well, what have we got on? I, I tell you what, they're just like dandelion flower. Yeah. Same as that when they, when they blooms out in big like that. And I was saying, well, what have we got on, I wonder? And then I'm saying, well, I don't know much about this, or he knows less. <laughs> <laughs> and by my this pictures I want to want it to hear on the same grab. <laughs> and I'm sold before that and not have to get another one, you know. And this the last thing in the world I thought was going to catch a fish on was what he put out on the water, you know, on the shore with it. And I went ashore too. I got to find out what saw this is like. And I talked to him, you know, and I said, What kind of a fly you call that? <laughs> Wait, wolf. First time I heard telephone, I wolf. Caught after Lee Wolf. The fly was there. He was a famous fisherman. He, he used to come back down here back then. Of course, I read about it after that, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so I got the white wolf. <laughs> he gave and it I to you? No, no, no. I wouldn't think about it. I wouldn't think about asking him. Either. But I, I, I inquired about it, you know, from the, and uh, I, I, they, they had a mountain climax for sale, uh, for sale, you know. So I bought them on it too. <laughs> and used them for a long time too, and you know that you know, he was into it. Time he got into it, now he, you know, he, the way wolf was popular. He, he was popular even back maybe when I started to fell that was fishing over a year away from years ago, and he would he was using that for years. Probably, yeah. yeah. Then we got into the Macintosh. But I never, I never see boy wolf before. And of course, then we got into the Macintosh. That was a, a smaller version of the uh, White Wolf really. <laughs> and we used it for years then. But the White Wolf was what got my attention the most, because that was about that big long. And when they were part of that, that's the last thing you thought anything was going to come up and take that. that. And it, now, when it comes to the Macintosh, there was a smaller version of it. Only different colors, for say. But, uh, but it worked, it worked, it worked, I guarantee it worked, didn't it, Derek? It used to be wicked. And uh, a lot came through Lee Wolf because he fished there on this river many, many years ago. So he fished there for two years in my time. But uh, he fished a good many years before that, I say. Did you go to work with No Paul? Oh, God. It was 82, 83. Yeah, around here, I would say. Did they take the stock from this river? Yes, I come over. I made many trips over here getting the fish from this river. When we come over there and get them, I used to come over with the truck and bring them over, truck load them. That's what bit. started exploits. Yeah, that's what, there was neither one in the exploits then, see? There was no fish at the exploits. On the, what we call one of these, we say. Yeah. There was salmon on the exploits before there was ever a dam. When they started the milling ground fast, they shut it down. You know, they dammed off the river until no fish, it only lasted a few years when no fish could get up, we say. And then there was no fish going up the exploits at all. Down to mm -hmm. what, back down to 30 or 40,000 on them. Yes, and yeah, now there's more going up the place now than going up here. There's a great big facility up there and be there all winter. The eggs were on. Well, I worked all winter at it. Uh, we had 16 pins about that void and a six feet long and mats and every one. That's where the eggs were too uh, on all these mats. But all of these, there was water city flowing up through mm -hmm. and then going out the main river. Uh, how many That's amazing. Would you hatch out then? 10 minutes, yeah, yeah. I goes down 
check boxes. Doing this now for the last three or four or five nights. None, none, you know. I goes down this night. My son, I bet you there was thousands up there. So I didn't leave phones to the helicopters. And extra staff come on. I have 15 or 16 extra people come on. Must have been exciting when <laughs> they all started. And the helicopter going. The first helicopter to take off at daylight. Just, you know, they land at daylight for the cabin. And then uh, they take off in Guan and, and fill up another one, she take off. Fill up another one, she take off. And there had to be someone go with the pole every time, I say. And I was fellow picked to go. <laughs> the most, I say. <laughs> we were taking them out to the, to the different rivers, then. Put them at the headwaters of the main river, the biggest river, I say. And we used to have 2,000 in a tray, like that big a tray, square tray. We put 2,000 here and 2,000 there, we say, we, we, uh, it was 4,000, then we shift over half the middle of the river. And then if, if you still have more left, you just shift down another 20 feet, 30 feet or so, and do the same thing again till you had them all out. Probably the biggest success story in Atlantic Salmon ever. Now, no Paul where it was, where it all took place, to, you wouldn't even recognize it. Not a building there anymore. Not a building no. there, none of no. it. Clean sweep, clean sweep. Wow. But I think they should have kept going though, just the same. You mm -hmm. know, they, they could have. Yes, it would have we been. We could a, have been uh, fixing all the rivers. Uh, exactly, that's yeah. what I mean. They only fixed the place. So there was a success story, no question about yeah. that on the exploit. You see, they, they are using bugs there. I'm looking at the bugs they're using. Yeah. None of them are using bugs like that. <laughs> none, none, of, that. none of them are yeah. using one like that. You wait now. You see how yeah. quick one grabs them. We just see, just see what will happen now. It might. Have you got it ginked up? Yeah. Just see what will happen. Well, you your cast are pretty good with that rod, too. Miss son, son of a gun. <laughs> not hungry, not hungry. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy the episode. I hope you get some feeling of how important this river is to our family and how much we love being here. And at 86 years old, how my brother and I look forward to fishing with our dad as much as we can.